Hey everyone, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the LastPass LinkedIn Live show, the passwordless POV. I'm technology correspondent Lisa Martin, and I've got two great guests here, here to really talk to you about getting your organization ready for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, which is next month in October. Please welcome my two guests. We have another Lisa. Lisa Plagemeyer is here, Executive Director of the NCA, or National Cybersecurity Alliance. And Sana Nissanen is here, Security and Privacy Awareness at LastPass. We're going to spend the next 15 to 20 minutes with you talking about four topics, really. We'll talk about Cybersecurity Awareness Month and its evolution. We'll talk about the credentials crisis crisis and give you some tips on how you can start solving that problem. We'll then cover the four key behaviors of Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and then finally tell you how to achieve security and data protection. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us comments, questions in LinkedIn here, and we'll pull them into the conversation. All right, Lisa, Lisa P, let's start with you. Tell us about the National Cybersecurity Alliance, the NCA. Give us that backstory. Well, we just celebrated 20 years of Cybersecurity Awareness Month last week with a big party in Washington, D.C., um, and that's really why our organization exists. If you go back 20 years, it was founded by Cybersecurity Awareness Month, was founded by the National Cybersecurity Alliance, so uh, the two are kind of synonymous, right? We're, we're one and the same, um, and it's a, a partnership between um, the government and private uh, industry organizations like some of the companies you'll see on our board, um, really to inspire behavior change. At the end of the day, it's about informing people, educating people, and then trying to inspire them to change some of their behaviors and to just have better security hygiene um, overall, whether it's an individual, like I like to pick on my mom and my kids, two of the, two of the groups, the demographic groups that, are, that struggle the most with being defrauded online, or small businesses, um, higher education, nonprofits. We've got content out there to help everybody stay safe online. Inspiring behavioral change is so important. It's challenging to do. There's another partnership, Lisa, that I'd love for you to dig into us, and that is Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency and the National Cybersecurity Alliance. Talk to us a little bit about that partnership and what it's intended to do. That's right. So uh, CISA is a part of DHS. And um, when Cybersecurity Awareness Month was a brand new thing 20 years ago, and the National Cybersecurity Alliance was a brand new thing uh, 20 years ago, DHS was kind of a brand new thing also. If you um, go back in your mind to the Wayback Machine, it was a post 9-11 world. There were some early viruses and worms that were starting to look like, uh, we were starting to realize that the internet wasn't going to be used just for, for uh, you know, uh, uh, improving uh, humankind <laughs> on the face of the earth. It wasn't just going to be used for good things. Um, if you remember the I love you virus and things like that. So it goes back quite a ways. But that's when the partnership with what was then DHS started. And um, eventually CISO was born a couple of years ago as a part of DHS. And we've had a partnership with that partnership with them um, the whole time, these the, the whole 20 years. Um, this year, you're going to see an even bigger and broader campaign come from CISA this October. Um, but really, we have resources that can help people all year round as well. And that's incredibly important. But it is really nice that there is the, this maybe the 21st year of the Cybersecurity Awareness Month, because that awareness is something that always needs to be persistent and maybe even dialed up. So now let's bring you into the conversation. One of the things that Lisa mentioned was inspiring behavioral change, which we know is challenging to do across demographics. Lisa mentioned a couple of the ones in particular, but Sana, what are some tips that you have for organizations that can really leverage Cybersecurity Awareness Month to really build a culture that's embracing security? Sure. Uh, can I firstly say, Lisa, 20 years is an incredible milestone in foresight. So, so here's to many more to come. Um, but yeah, for me, this month, Cybersecurity Month really is a month to take stock and refocus. Refocus our efforts in building the cybersecurity culture in the direction that we want it to travel. So, so I'm, as we know, it's more than one month of activities. Um, it's more than a single culture campaign. Um, I think culture really, it involves the engagement and inclusion of all of our people during the course of the year in every communication that we put out, in every interaction with our security teams, um, in every training exercise that we have. 
because ultimately it's about having confident people, proactive people in the face of, of our security challenges at the moment. Um, but also on the flip side of the coin, I would say we want people who trust the organization to support us and to guide us to working smarter and working safer, which then in turn helps us, helps the confidence factor. Um, so I think people's values and perceptions have to be aligned to this mission as well. So, we, and also we need some, some way to measure this. Um, traditional okay. ways, surveys, focus groups and so on. But if we don't have time for that, October is coming, coming right around the corner. Um, one quick way could be to run, uh, use our, using our business mess messaging apps, run a one question anonymous survey, for example, just as a litmus test to, to gauge our people's confidence and trust levels. I mean, one question could be, um, I know where to report suspected uh, security incidents, for example, or we can dial that up a bit and say, well, if I think I may have done something to compromise the security of my organization, I feel confident to report it. So I think that all of this sort of feedback from our people is, is valuable insight that we can feed back into our uh, awareness strategy for, for the remainder of the year. Definitely. It seems like a flywheel of the organization, the awareness, the confidence, something that needs to just be continuously moving. I want to talk, finish our, our first topic here by getting your perspectives on the evolution of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Lisa, going back to you, you talked about the partnerships. Let me get this right. The National Cybersecurity Alliance, um, you talked about Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA. What are some of the things that you've seen, Lisa, in the last 20 years that really demonstrate where awareness needs to go so that ultimately we can fulfill a vision of a really secure, interconnected world? I think if you're at an organization that is still taking uh, an approach that is mainly compliance motivated, compliance based, and you're only doing security training once a year, then I would ask you to vow this October to change that habit. Um, you as a security or, or compliance professional, because um, in order to really reduce risk in your organization, it needs to be a constant drumbeat um, that's, that's always being trickled out just to keep it top of mind for people. So, you know, whether it's a one question survey, like I, I love that idea, that's a great idea. Or it's, you know, a message you put out every couple of days, you put out some new content on Slack, for example, or Teams or whatever you're using for your instant messaging. We have, if you go to staysafeonline.org and sign up to be a champion, you'll get a whole bunch of free material. So we've done a bunch of the work for you as far as running a campaign goes. And um, you just kind of plug and play. Um, it's a whole lot easier to maybe edit an article somebody else has written than it is to stare at a blank screen and come up with something for, from scratch. So I would say there's so much free material out there to run an, a, a constant drip campaign on security instead of just looking at, at it once a year or, or um, you know, as a compliance exercise. I think, I think that's something that is still evolving. We've come a really long way, but there's still room to go there. The other thing I would say that, uh, where we're evolving is getting uh, content out there that's a lot more personalized. It's not one size fits all. I might see some security training or some kind of messaging in an awareness campaign that really appeals to, to me and my demographic, maybe the role that I'm in, but that might not be relevant for, for somebody else in a different role or somebody who's a, a different age or a different nationality in a, in a different country. So really getting as uh, role-based as you possibly can and, and being more um, personalized in your messaging. If we yes. look, what look at what marketers do, marketers and advertisers, um, we really wanna mimic that. And what have they done over the last 10 or 20 years? They've gotten more and more personalized in their, yep. in their messaging to us. Yep, that personalization is, is incredibly important. And to your point, it's not one size fits all. It varies quite considerably. I wanna move on to our second topic, which is the credential crisis. Lisa's gonna cover that, but I wanna invite you in the audience, share with us your plans for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Do you have a drip campaign going that is constantly that continuous flywheel that we talked about? We'd love to hear what you're doing. All right, Lisa, when it comes to the digital world, people are the new perimeter, the perimeter is porous. Talk about the credential crisis and why we're in it. Um, I, I think we have a crisis because, so we, we do some research every year that we call OBEHAVE, 
And it points to things like um, people not really using truly unique passwords, right? There's still a lot of people out there that believe that if I just change a, a few characters, I'm going to magically keep the bad guys away because they don't understand the technology and the automation that's being used by the uh, criminal organizations or the nation state actors. Um, you know, the number of people that still give you an eye roll when you say to them they should be using multi-factor authentication. Um, really, that's something that makes a huge, huge difference. And, um, you know, your password manager can even help you with MFA. So um, some of these, these, these bad habits that we've discovered in our research, so the most popular way for people to keep track of their passwords is to write them down in a notebook. I would call that a credential crisis. If, if you're writing them down, <laughs> um, that's kind of a problem. A lot of people say, well, who's going to break into my house and steal my password notebook? But I just am suspicious. I'm not sure I believe that you don't ever take that on vacation with you or to a coffee shop or, or take it anywhere. And what I don't like about it as a solution is that the recovery from it is, is, is just incredibly hard. If somebody had access to your email, all your other password resets are probably tied in some way to your email. So you've really given them the, kings to the, king, the keys to the kingdom if you're using a, a, a notebook to write it all down. So, um, yeah, our data just shows us from that report that uh, there's still some bad habits out there that, that need correcting. And, um, you know, for the next couple of years, at least, as, 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 as much as uh, zero trust is a thing, we're, st we're still going to be using passwords. A lot of people feel like, well, I can, I can make do with my bad habits because zero trust is right around the corner and I'm not going to need yeah. passwords anymore. But right. um, the truth is not every technology company um, advances at the same rate. So passwords are going to be with us for a little bit yet. They will be with us. And, and you talking about your mom just gives me this cringe of my, the, the multi-page sheets my mom has with her passwords. And then they're always wrong. Anyway, that's another conversation. <laughs> but, you know, remote and hybrid work are the norm. We do so many transactions online. With digital explosion, the attack surface is growing. I always think it's becoming very amorphous. How... Lisa, do you advise organizations begin to start solving the credentials crisis problem? Well, I know there are um, folks out there that, that don't feel completely comfortable with um, password managers, but what our research shows is that if you don't give people the tools, then they are gonna resort to things like, like writing passwords down. So I really stress to IT and security teams that they wrap their hand around it and they you know, do their own evaluation and they pick one for corporate use. And there are even some companies out there that we've worked with that have licensed their password manager in such a way that they've also made it available to their employees for their personal use and their employees' families, which I think is fantastic because then you're encouraging uh, better habits across the board, yeah. both at home and at work. And that's important is in, in continually encouraging better habits, better security hygiene, really helping the organization improve its security posture. Let's move on now to the four key behaviors of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We're going to bring Sana back into the conversation, but first I want to tell you what those are. Updating your software, enabling multi-factor authentication or MFA that Lisa was talking about, recognizing and reporting phishing, getting the confidence Lisa was talking about as well to do that. And then the fourth is using strong passwords and a password manager. Lisa, double click on some of the biggest benefits that organizations and individuals can take by using a password manager. Well, like I alluded to, I think it really helps you break some some bad habits. You know, if I'm using a password that's for sale on the dark web, uh, oftentimes it's going to tell me that if I'm using a password that's too weak, it's, you know, or if I'm setting a new password and it's too weak, it's, it's going to tell me that it's going to alert me to some other issues. I also like being able to um, share passwords in your family. Um, some people ask me, how did we get our teenagers or our young adult children to adopt the family password manager. And I said, well, that was easy when they went away from uh, went away to college, we just changed the Netflix password on them. And then it didn't take long to get that text <laughs> that said, hey, what's the new Netflix password? And we said, well, it's in that password manager thing that we told you about. So if you uh, wanna watch Netflix, yeah. you better download the password manager. Oh my God, that's funny. So like, give us some tips on, we've talked about the Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We've talked about its evolution the credentials crisis, why we're in it, how organizations can start to solve it. What are some tips that you can offer the audience about changing employee behavior around passwords? 
Yeah, um, that's a good question, actually. I mean, whether it's changing any sort of behavior, security behavior otherwise, or whether we're implementing new tools or controls or limiting access, whatever your security strategy entails, I think it's good to remember that not all resistance is resistance to security. Um, there are reasons for this. I mean, it is a human trait that we carefully manage our resources to cope with the demands of business and life uh, that suit our goals. So, I mean, understanding that there is a rationale under this. I think the challenge is actually digging a bit deeper and understanding what those are. Do, do P, for example, do people view this as a blocker? Uh, what could what it what do they define as a blocker? Or uh, do people understand what they're meant to do? Um, so I think I think if we are um, implementing a new tool or encouraging some sort of behavior change, ensure that your people understand it. Ensure that they understand the risks of not adopting it, how it benefits them. And I think um, uh, a key ingredient in this as well is to keep open communication channels, ensure that there's some way that they can get feedback and answers to their questions. I mean, whether it's that initial survey that I mentioned at the at the top, an anonymous survey, if, if there's some embarrassment issues, <laughs> um, don't want to appear foolish with a foolish question, for example, this can be made anonymous as well. So um, I would say if your people are a part of that journey with you, um, it, your uptake will be smoother and more positive experience for everyone. Definitely. And you bring up a great point about the incredible importance of communication and probably over communicating in this in this arena. Let's move on to our final and fourth topic in our last few minutes here. And that's advice from both of you, Lisa and Sana, on how organizations can achieve security and data protection. Sana, I want to stick with you. You talked about some great tips on changing employee behavior where security is concerned, how organizations can help get them on board and really do this collaboratively. What are some of the basic protection mechanisms, practices that organizations can start doing now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the four that you listed are, are incredibly valuable. And I think this is an excellent focus for this upcoming month um, and all the resources that, that Lisa has mentioned. Um, but let me take this at, this question from more of a human side of cybersecurity, and maybe I'll add three more to this, if I may. Um, I, I think when you're messaging, whatever type of messaging this is, make it real and make it timely. Um, I mean, we our my security program collaborates with our threat intelligence team quite closely, providing um, our, our staff um, the mo most current updates and, and context and explaining the context to, to our audience as well. So this is something that our staff wanted, and this is something we're able to provide. Um, also, if you are lucky enough to have a security team, I know we're, we, there's small, small and medium sized businesses out there that don't have that. But um, if you do have a security team, make them visible highlight their work, what they're doing in, in the back. Um, most often people don't understand what their security teams are doing. And I think this puts a human edge to it and an understanding um, and, an, and an empathy, if you will. Um, and also maybe very briefly, the last one is, was make security updates and mentions um, or, or positive uh, things that have happened in the organization related to security, make them a regular deal um, yeah. in your all hands, in your um, monthly briefings, whatever it is, make it current. And that just shows that your organization values security. I love that. And I think you make a great point, Sana, about really elevating security in, in terms of visibility. Lisa, same question to you. Basic protection mechanisms, practices, organizations can really start getting employed now. I think it's, um, I think it's time for us to look at how are we making um, how are we enabling people to do the right thing? So whether it's, it's you know, the four behaviors that we're focusing on for Cybersecurity Awareness Month or, or any other um, behaviors in your organization, you know, processes, ways you want employees to do things, have you made that as frictionless as possible? Um, I worked at an organization that, that years ago decided to implement a password manager, but to get it, you actually had to um, go to the IT self-service portal click through four or five different places, and then finally get to the place where you could download it and install it and then do all the work of, of getting it set up. So there were way too many licks to get to the center of the yeah. lollipop. And, yeah. um, you know, Amazon wouldn't go to business that way, right? If that was, if it took us five or six clicks to purchase something on amazon.com, we would probably never buy anything yeah. here. Yeah. No. So um, thinking about like, how do you not just incentivize people to do the right thing, but reduce the barriers for the behavior that you want. 
Um, our O Behave report that I mentioned earlier, that takes a real be behavioral science approach to cybersecurity. And that's really what it's about. It's about reducing the behaviors for people to do the right thing. Um, it's not so much that, you know, human beings are, are lazy or just going to take the path of least resistance. Um, people come to work every day or, or set about to do a task at home every day, um, to, you know, to do that task, to do their jobs, not to be security professionals. So how do we in the background enable them in a way that makes them really easy to makes it easy for them to do their jobs or do their tasks in a way that's that's secure. So it's about us fitting in with the business more than it is about uh, trying to make the business fit fit to us. Right. Secure and frictionless. That's a great point that you made there. Last couple of questions for each of you as we finish out our final minute here. Sana, what are some of the things that the audience can expect from LastPass in next month in Cybersecurity Awareness Month? Yes, we have an activity filled month here at Last Pass. Um, we have webinars, live demos, thought leadership pieces in the forms of blogs and ebooks and infographics. Um, we have our uh, threat intelligence team is putting out Last Pass Labs, which is a, a content hub for threat intelligence. Um, plus, um, uh, yeah, come and, come and see. We have on many topics, such as deploying a password manager, enabling MFA. Um, and going password list, how to do it, what it is, many more, uh, even beyond October we have coming up. So welcome. Excellent. So check the LastPass webpage, guys, for all of that great information. Lisa, final thoughts from you in terms of where you would point the audience to continue and ramp up their education on cybersecurity awareness. So I'm going to give a shameless plug again for staysafeonline.org. Um, if you go there at the at the top in a promo box, there's a there's a box there about signing up to be a champion for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. That gets you access to a whole bunch of free materials that you can use this October or anytime you want. Um, there's also a place on our homepage to sign up for our newsletter. If you get our newsletter, then every time we're doing a campaign, whether it's um, you know a safe online use a safe use of dating apps and romance scams around Valentine's Day, or it's safe holiday shopping, or if it's staying safe while you're on vacation in the summer, um, you'll get an email telling you about those new campaign materials. So whether you're the end consumer and are just looking for help, or you're a security professional, um, and you're looking for information you can put out to your organization, um, it's, it's, it's all there. We, we create a lot of content so that you don't have to, and it's all free and there's no trademark or copyright on anything. So you're welcome to plagiarize to your heart's content. Um, <laughs> yeah. Outstanding. But, but thank you both so much for being on the past for this POV. You shared some incredibly important insights about cybersecurity awareness month, what enterprises still need to do to help enable that secure interconnected world, how behaviors can be positively impacted and how organizations can really focus on people for data protection mechanisms and processes to put in place. We thank you both so much for your time and sharing all those great resources for where the audience can go to learn more. We thank you and the audience for watching. If you wanna watch this again, because you found it so informational, your luck, it's gonna be available on demand on LastPass's LinkedIn. Thanks everyone so much for taking the time to join us today. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. We'll see you next time.